Okay, in this video what we would like to do is talk a little bit about the timer that comes with the RSLogix 500 program by Rockwell Automation. So we're going to just start off by going into a quick introduction of where that's located. So the timer is located in the timer counter bin at the top. Now, when you click on this, what you'll notice is that there are three different timers available. You have the TON, the TOF, and the retentive timer, the RTO. The first one that we're going to talk about is the TON, the timer on delay. So what we're going to do is we'll come here, we'll add this into a rung, and let's just go through a little bit about what this is. Now the first thing we have to do is address it. 99% of your time, timers are going to be located in your data table file 4. Okay, so that address always has to come up as being T4 colon 0. So it's located in the T4 data table file and this would be timer 0. And you can have up to 256 timers in this program in this one data table file. So you would see T4 colon 1, 2, 3, 10, 12, whatever uh, the number it is that the programmers used before. Most people just start off with zero and start working their ways down through it. Okay? Now, the next part of a timer that we need to understand is the time base. PLCs have always struggled with this idea of decimal points, and if we need to uh, have a timer that a timer accumulated value that has like four and a half seconds or 130 30 and a half seconds, whatever it is, or you know, 4.25 seconds we can do that with our time base. So with our time base we have three different selections. We can make it at one and that just means you would take whatever is in your accumulated value and multiply it by one. So if you need uh, two minutes that'd be 120 seconds you would put 120 in your preset value. Okay? If you need you know five and a half seconds you may use the point zero one which would be the multiplier. So you'd have to put 550 seconds in there. Okay? And then we also have this one, then that would move your decimal place three times, so it'd be 5,500 would be 5.5 seconds. Okay? And you'll kind of see that as we walk through. But just to get started, we're going to go ahead and put the accumulated at point zero. We'll put it at point one. Okay? Then you have our preset. This is the amount that the timer needs to count to. Okay, So we're going to make this simple because I don't want us waiting around too long. We're just going to make this in 5 seconds. Now you can't put your uh, preset in minutes with RSLogix 500. So if you want it to be an hour, you know, an hour and 13 minutes, you'd have to calculate that out and figure out how many seconds that is to add that into here. Okay, And so now with this timer on delay, what this does is this delays something turning on. Okay, It delays it on. Okay, So here what I'll do is I'm just going to show you how it works. I'm going to put a simple input in here. So I got an input in here that will activate the timer. Now these timers have three different contacts associated with them. The first one is the enable bit, and this is how it's addressed. T4 colon 0 forward slash EN. Okay? Now, this enable bit will turn on whenever your timer is powered. So as soon as this switch is on, this will turn on. Okay? And we'll see how that works here in a second. I'll put a output here of of a solenoid. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and download this and we'll see how it works. Okay, now this input, your enable bit should go true as soon as you that green button is activated. Now you can see that the timer is timing and you can see that it's getting up to five. Okay, so now this enable bit is just true whenever the switch is true. The timer has no effect on it directly. Okay, now the enable bit is typically associated with a memory contact for the timer. Okay, so let me show you what that means. So I'm going to go offline. 
I'm going to put memory around here. I'm going to move this enable bit up here and then I'm going to throw a stop button in here. Okay, and we will now use this enable bit as memory for this. This avoids you needing to put a B3 in there to latch that timer in uh, for memory. So the next contact we want to talk about is the timer timing bit. Now this is something unique to Alan Bradley. Okay, uh, not a lot of other PLC programs can have this timer timing. And what this does is this will go true when the accumulated is counting. Okay, so anytime the accumulated is counting, this will stay on. So when I activate this push button, all I have to do is momentarily, the enable button will count. This output will come on for five seconds. Okay, let's take a look. We'll now run it and see how it operates. So I'm going to momentarily push the green button and you can see that timer is going on. Okay, and it will stay out for as long as that timer is timing. Okay, let's watch it again. Now notice at five seconds, it's done and it goes back. And this timer's accumulated value will stay in there until I turn the, I turn the logical continuity off to it by activating the stop button. Okay? So, now, as you notice, the enable button acted as the memory there. The, the cool, one of the cool things about the timer is I can change the time base right here while I'm online. So if I come over to here and I activate the green button again, now the solenoid that controls that cylinder will be activated for the full 10 seconds and then it will automatically retract. Okay. Activate the stop button. Let's go offline and we will look at the last instruction that is used with it. So now the next one that's available to us besides the timer timing is the timer done. And this is a really powerful instruction. It's probably our most common. This will actually delay it on. The timer timing is good if you want something to be on for a very specific amount of time. The timer done will activate where you're actually delaying the output from turning on. So we'll identify this as T4 colon zero forward slash done. Okay. And we will go ahead and download this and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so now what we will do, we'll come over here, we will activate the green push button. And you notice that nothing happened for five seconds. And then after five seconds, that output is activated. And it will stay activated until the stop button is pushed. Watch it one more time. So if you need to delay something happening for five seconds or 10 seconds or four hours, your timer on delay uh, using the done contact from that is the one you want to go with, okay? Now let me show you how you can combine a couple of these things here. So watch what I do here. Instead of using the stop button, I'm going to copy the timer done up here. Okay. And I'm going to change this to the timer timing. Okay. And this will let something run. This incorporates all three of them for a set amount of time. So I'm going to change my base to here and I'm going to let this run for seven and a half seconds. So I want that cylinder to be on for seven and a half seconds. So it's 750 multiplied by 0 0.01, which is 7.5. This needs to be a normally closed contact. I should mention that. Sorry, I put the wrong, I, I put the wrong contact in here. So I'm going to right click, change instruction type, change this over to XO, X0, XIO, and examine if open instruction. And now it will operate um, correctly. 
So I'll download this. We will activate the start button. And this will stay on for seven and a half seconds. And then it automatically shuts off and it is, it is ready to go again. And this is an overview of how the timer on delay functions. And there's a lot more that you can do with this timer, but this is a brief introduction. Another thing to remember is all of the information that is being displayed in here is also available in the T4 data table file. Okay, your preset timer, the accumulated, and the status of these different bits, the enable bit, which is memory, the timer timing, which is activated when it's true, and the done bit, okay, which activates when the accumulated is equal to the preset.